Hello and welcome everybody. The webinar that we're presenting today is on footbridge dynamics with LUSAS. It covers both the engineering issues, codes of practice that uh, guide engineers, and the use of LUSAS in achieving this kind of work. Today's webinar is presented by three of us. My name is Philip Ike. I am the Marketing Communications Manager for LUSAS and my colleagues. I'm Julian Moses. I'm going to be looking after the live uh, demo sessions. I'm Paul Bellchamber. I provide uh, general support to the team. During this event, we encourage your interaction. Questions can be asked in the GoToWebinar panel, which you can find at uh, the, the bottom of your screen. We will reply to some comments during the event. Uh, due to the large number of delegates that we have on this, we've got um, over 500 registrants. Obviously, we can't answer everything during the event. Those that we can't will be answered afterwards. You can also send emails either during the event or post on webinars at lusas.com. Presentation today is separated into four principal areas. We start with the structural idealization and modeling of a footbridge, move to the assessment of eigenvalue frequencies. We then consider pedestrian loading phenomena and relate those to codes of practice. And finally, we look at the response analysis specifically to the Euro code EN 1990. So why is dynamic assessment of structures important? Well, in fact, it's gaining in importance. Uh, currently, the industry is in evolution. Basically, the demands, um, expectations of the client, the demands of the architect, coupled with new design and construction methods, is resulting in potentially longer and more slender structures which become more dynamically susceptible. This has a direct impact on the comfort for pedestrians. We're going to be looking today at the example of a steel footbridge and we're modeling this as a truss. We're idealizing it with thick beam elements um, with rigid connections. The deck is going to be modeled as non-structural. It will add mass to the frequency analysis, but it does not add stiffness to the analysis. Loads which are placed onto the deck are modeled as dispersing to boundary members. I'm now going to hand over to Julian, and we'll get started on the modeling of this structure. OK, so we're looking at the LUSAS modeler now. We're going to start a new model. We're going to work with the footbridge model here. And I'm going to use the units newton meters. Newton meters. And this is important for the uh, wizard that we're going to use later on, because it uses those units. Z is going to be the vertical axis. And if I OK that, we have a blank screen, and I can start building the model. I'm going to click in the Y box down here to look in the Y axis. And then I'm going to start to enter some points to build the model. Now, if we have a look at the image here of the footbridge, we've got a curving bottom cord, a curving top cord. Now, the bottom cord has a radius of 199.7. Top cord, 28.9. Half the bridge is 15 meters long, so the whole bridge is going to be 30 meters long. So let's put the top and bottom cords into the model of festival. Now, to do this, I'm going to create some points to start with. So I'm going to create a point at minus 15 in the x, 0, 0. Another one at 15 in the x, 0, 0. And a third reference point that's going to be at 0, 0, 15. Now, if I select these three points, I'm going to select this one first of all, and then this one, and then third of them. I'm then going to go to the line dialog, but I'm going to go to the arc dialog. Now, this third point here is the construction point that allows me to curve the line towards it. And I'm going to use a radius of 199.7 and hit the Apply button. And you'll see that I've got the bottom cord member in. I'm then going to change the radius to 28.9 and hit OK, and I get the top cord. I'm then going to delete that construction point there. Now, if we go back to the drawing, 
we have transverse members that cross between the trusses at three meters and then four meters, four meters, and we have another one here at the end at point six. So I'm going to create points that allow me to build those into the truss. So I'm going to take this point and I'm going to copy it in the x direction by three. The new point I'm going to select and then copy that in the x direction by four six times. I'm going to take this very end point here and copy it by point six. And I'm going to do the same at the other end, but I'm going to copy that by minus 0.6. OK, I'm going to take all of these new points, and I'm going to sweep them in the Z direction. And I'm going to sweep them by 10. Now, the 10 isn't important. I just want to create lines that cut through the top and bottom cords. I can then select these lines, and I can then intersect them. So geometry point by intersection, and I can then get rid of the parts of the lines that I no longer need. Okay, I'm going to do the same on the bottom cord now. So I'm going to select these vertical members, and I'm going to do that by holding the T key down on the keyboard, and that does a vertical selection for me. I can then add to that the bottom cord member, and I can then intersect these lines, geometry point by intersection. Okay, I'm going to hold the T key down again, and I'm going to do some vertical selections through the model. Hold the shift key down as well. And that section, that section, and down through there. And I can delete all of those parts. Okay, I can now start to create the transverse members. I'm going to select all the points in the bottom of the cord here and I'm going to sweep them in the y direction. Now if I go back to the drawing, the trusses are 4.1 meters apart, so I'm going to take all of those points and sweep in the y direction by 4.1 meters. That creates the transverse members. I can then take the truss here and copy the whole thing by 4.1 meters in the y direction. So that forms the basic geometry that we're going to work with for this footprint model. I can now assign the engineering properties. Now the engineering properties are the attributes and this model needs the top five. So to start with mesh line, I'm going to use a thick beam element, three dimensional. I'm just going to call this thick beam. And I'm going to assign that to all the members. Now the geometric sections that we're going to use on this model are European sections. I'm going to go to Attributes, Geometric Section Library, and I'm going to change to EU sections. Now the top cord is going to be made of a pipe section, and the pipe section that I'm going to use is a 273 by 20. So 273 by 20. I'm going to hit Apply, and then I'm going to delete this name. That allows me to now select the next section that I want to work with, which is a 114 by 10, which is that one. Now the bottom deck section is going to be made of HE sections, so I'm going to swap to those, and I'm going to use the 280A, so that one there. Now in the deck, I actually need two orientations of this section, so I'm going to switch it by 90 and hit OK. OK, I'm going to look at the elevation, and I'm going to cross through the top arch to pick the top cord and the hangers and I'm going to drag on the big pipe section. There you see it. Now in Lusas, if you reselect these hangers, because I want these to be the smaller pipe section, I'm going to drop the second property on top of those, and that automatically replaces it. So if a line has a geometric property and then you assign it a new one, that automatically replaces it. I don't need to deassign it first of all. Now if I look down the bridge, I can then select the lines that represent the deck and drop on the HE section. Now if I look at an isometric view here, you can see that the transverse members view orientation is OK, but the bottom cord is not the right way around, so I'm going to use the um, other section that I've created in my model to sort that out. So I'm going to select the lines representing the bottom cord here and here, and drag on the fourth section. And if I go back and look at the view, you'll see that my sections are now orientated as I want them. Okay, I can finish this off very quickly now. 
materials, material library. I'm going to use a EU steel and I'm going to assign that to all the members in the model. Now for the supports, we're going to have some very simple supports. One abutment is going to be pinned, so I'm fixing it X, Y and Z. And I'm just going to call that pinned. Now the other abutment is going to be a roller. It's allowed to slide in the X direction, so I'll take that off and create the second support. Okay, I'm just going to switch off my fleshing here and I'm going to create, select these two points and assign the pin supports. Select these two points there and there and I'm going to assign the roller support. Okay, so that finishes the, the basic model. I now need to put some loading onto it. So I'm going to go to the analysis tab in the tree view and I'm going to right hand mouse button on low case one, gravity. That assigns the gravity to every member in this model. I'm going to rename that to be self-weight, or I'm just going to call it SW. I'm also going to rename analysis one, because as we go through this presentation, I will be creating other analyses. So I'm going to rename analysis one to be analysis one linear static. Now, I'm just going to save the model, check it runs. And there, if I rotate this around, you'll see the deformed shape, the whole thing taken down. If I go to my Layers tab, I can switch on my Window Summary, and we've got a deflection of 4.1 E minus 3. I'm working in meters, that's four millimeters of movement. Now, at this point, I would go on and add the other static loading that I want to design the footbridge. But for this presentation, I'm going to hand it back to Phil now to talk about modal dynamics. Okay, thank you, Julian. We're going to just stop at that point to review some of the questions we've had so far. Uh, we've had a lot, as I said, there's, there's no way we can answer all of these. Um, if you are not receiving uh, answers during the session, please be assured that we will answer you latterly. There is quite a common thread of questioning that's come through, which is to do with the creation of the structure. Does this have to be done just with the modeling tools inside LUSAS, or can it be produced externally? The answer is, uh, yes, it can be produced externally. So if you're operating, for instance, in a CAD system or a gen, any other modeling system and you want to import information across to LUSAS, there is a variety of ways of doing that. Not only that, but in one of our future webinars, we will be presenting BIM modeling and its interfacing with LUSAS. Uh, so please, for those that are interested in that side, um, do look out for that presentation coming soon. Right, we're taking the static model now and advancing this into a dynamic analysis. And dynamic analysis is split into two principal parts, two principal types. First of all, we have frequency domain analysis, which is commonly also referred to as modal analysis. We then have time domain analysis, which can also be commonly uh, referred to as time history or transient analysis. Both of these types of analysis uh, will be um, looked at during this presentation. Starting with eigenvalue frequency analysis, uh, with this we get the natural frequencies of the structure and using LUSAS we can define how many frequencies we want or what range of frequencies we want to look at and the corresponding mode shapes. Taking that forward, we can use a superposition method which we term in LUSAS interactive modal dynamics and this allows us to define a set of contributing natural frequencies which we can take forward to consider the time response of the structure and indeed look at force response on that structure to dynamic loading at particular frequencies. Now this has a very obvious application towards pedestrian excitation which is the subject of this webinar. There are considerations with this approach. It's based on linear el elastic principles in other, way, in other words, nonlinearity cannot be incorporated. So, for example, it will exclude effects such as material yielding, um, geometrically nonlinear effects, and boundary nonlinear effects such as support liftoff. It's calculated directly from the mass stiffness matrix. This means that loads are not part of the calculation, and the engineer needs to make a judgment on those loads that should be contributing towards the eigenvalue analysis and therefore need to be converted into mass. It identifies and visualizes the modes of free vibration. 
deflection and load effect amplitude are not given since no loading is included. However, the results can be combined with loading later on. So frequency analysis in LUSAST. We start with a working linear static analysis, as Julian has just produced, and we take that forward and convert it into an eigenvalue analysis. And this is relatively simple using the controls in LUSAS. We simply set an eigenvalue control, define the number of eigenvalues we want to look at. We can add as well the additional mass to the structure. This can be done inside the dialog shown on the screen. And it should be noted that in some codes, multiple mass assumptions may be uh, required. So for instance, in the Satra technical guide, we consider both an empty footbridge and a footbridge with, a de with additional um, person loading of 70 kilograms per meter squared. The model then can be analyzed and will produce frequencies and shapes. These are shown here. So you have an isometric view of the bowstring arch and correspondingly, you have one of the fundamental frequencies shown down at the bottom right. So to take you through how that's created in LUSAS, I'll now hand back to Julia. Thanks, Phil. So let's go back into LUSAS. Now at the moment, if I look at the analysis tab, we have our analysis one linear static, and we want to create a new analysis for the modal dynamics. So I'm gonna to go to the analysis menu and structural analysis. And this will allow me to create a new analysis that inherits the base properties from the first analysis. So the geometry, the material, the supports. And I'm going to call this analysis two, and I'm going to call it eigenvalue. Now, if I OK this, I get my second analysis in the tree view here. And it's this low case here. I'm right hand mouse button and go to control. So I need to set the eigenvalue controls. Now, for this particular analysis, we're going to look at frequency. Now, I could look at a range of frequencies, but I'm going to look at minimum. And this is zero hertz upwards, effectively. And for this particular model, I'm going to identify 10 natural frequencies, or 10 mode shapes. Now, if I OK that, all I need to do now is solve the analysis. So taking a linear model and doing a dynamic analysis on it is very easy. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to rotate this around. Now, I'm just going to switch off the fleshing so it's a little bit easier to see. Now, the pink lines are the original underformed geometry. The gray mesh here is the deformed geometry. So you can see that this particular mode shape with a frequency of 1.8 is actually a lateral mode. If I look at the second mode, again, that's a lateral mode of the top of the arches moving. If I look at the third mode, if I rotate this around, you should be able to see that that is a, a vertical mode. I'm just going to go to the deform mesh layer and just increase the deform mesh value. So that's a vertical mode. And if I go to the fourth mode, a bit difficult to see, but that is actually a twisting mode. So we've got two lateral modes, a vertical mode, and a twisting mode. Now, if I go back to the third mode here, which is the vertical mode, the one I'm interested in, you'll see that this has a natural frequency of 3.6 hertz. Now, in the PowerPoint that Phil just uh, displayed, we had the same image, but that had a mode shape of uh, 3 hertz. Now, that's because at the moment, we are considering just the structural mass. I now need to add to this model the non-structural mass. Now, the non-structural mass will be the, the deck system, the parapets, any of the bridge furniture that is not actually providing stiffness to the model, but will be providing mass effectively. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to close my results down, and I'm going to add some structural mass and non-structural mass to this model. Now, I'm going to look at edge onto the model, and I'm going to go to attributes, mesh, point, and it's this point mass that we want to create. Now, we're looking at a 3D model, so 3D, and I'm going to call these added mass elements. OK. These are now in the tree view. So I'm going to select some points to assign these to. So I'm going to basically set these endpoints, all of these points down through the model, and the endpoint here. So I'm not applying it to these ones here. Now, 
I'm going to drag on those added mass points. And if I just look at the isometric view, you'll see these large gray dots are representing where the added mass elements are effectively. Now I need to associate the amount of mass that I want at those locations. So attributes, material, mass. Now I'm going to do a 500 kg weight at each of the locations. So I'm just going to call this mass 500 kg. Now in reality, I would probably have different masses at the end and here, but just to keep it simple for this presentation, I'm just doing a single mass. Now to select the locations I want to put the mass on, I'm just going to right hand mouse button there, select assignments, it then selects all the points and I can drag that on. Now in this case, I'm going to add the mass to the base analysis, the linear analysis, because I want this to be in the self-weight uh, case as well as the inherited into the modal analysis, the analysis two. Okay, so let me reanalyze this now. It has to resolve both analyses because obviously I've added it to both. And if I look at the third natural frequency, the vertical mode, this is the one that I'm interested in. And you can see the natural frequency has dropped, has, has gone from 3.6 and it's dropped to three hertz. So it's very important that when you're doing these dynamic analysis models, you consider both the structural mass and the non-structural mass because it will affect the, uh, the frequencies you are getting back. Now at that point, I'm going to hand you back to Phil to talk about the pedestrian dynamics. Thank you very much, Julian, and uh, we'll take um, the opportunity here to just respond to some questions. Um, several of you have asked about uh, how do we know how many frequencies to put in the dialog box um, for assessment. The answer is, and we'll look at this a little bit more as we go through the Euro code in the next session, you are looking to capture the fundamental frequencies in each of the vertical, horizontal, and torsional modes. Um, but as I say, we'll, uh, we'll cover that in more detail when we get to that appropriate part of the session. So moving forward. We're now going to look at uh, the Eurocode specifics for pedestrian dynamics. This is in accordance with EN 1990, colon 2002. And within this, we have a guidance on how we should assess the comfort for pedestrians. Part of this is related to acceleration and part towards frequency. So taking what I just said a moment ago, if you look at the frequency definition in part two here, we're looking in the Euro code for frequencies below five hertz in the vertical direction and two and a half hertz laterally and torsionally. And at that point, we are defining um, the bridge as uh, an issue in terms of pedestrian comfort. The UK National Annex adds further to this with the assessment of crowded conditions. So again, taking an extract from the code, this clause defines a load, a forcing function, which can be applied to the structure. It's related to the number of pedestrians and the geometry of the deck. And this allows us to look at a steady state response and to calculate the maximum vertical accelerations. These need to be assessed against the design limits to define whether or not the design is acceptable. Further UK National Annex considerations include a vertical moving and pulsating force. And this models a single or a group of pedestrians moving across a bridge and imparting a sinusoidal load onto the structure. That can be modeled using a utility, a wizard within LUSAS. This is available to all of our users and we'll talk latterly about how you can get hold of this for those of you that do not currently. But the wizard allows you to set up uh, the nature of the loading, um, the uh, spacing that you want to use for um, uh, running the analysis, and it will automatically generate the loads for you onto the bridge. From this, you can then generate your output. This can be both visual, graphical, um, in terms of contours and displacements. You can get animations, as you see on the screen here, and you can graph the structure, as you can see in the background. 
And I'll hand back to Julia now to take you through the production of that. Okay, um, what we're going to do then is look at the, the moving pulsating load first of all. Um, now, I'm just going to close my results down. And the first thing I'm going to do is define a search area. When I use the, the discrete load, I need to define which part of the model it, I want it to act on. So I'm going to create a search area, which I'm just going to call deck. And I'm going to assign that to the HE sections. Now, I'm just going to select the HE section, select assignments, and drag that on. And I'm going to do the other one as well. Select assignments. Okay, so that search area will be used when I run the wizard in a minute. The next thing I need to do is define the path that the pedestrian is going to take. So I'm going to create a line that runs down through the center of my bridge. Okay, so this is the path that I'm going to get the, the vibrating pedestrian to um, move along. Now, I tend to start it off the structure, so I've got some quiet time before the load hits the structure, and I also take it further across. So even though the pedestrian has left the bridge, I'll actually see the resonance of the structure die down with the damping. Now, once you've created that line, all you need to do is start the wizard. So I'm going to do that. So script, run script, and there it is. Now, there are some numbers you need to plug into this that are related to the national annex. So to talk about those, I'm going to go back to this PDF. And this is the pulsating moving force. Now, it's about this equation. Now, the wizard basically handles the calculation of the intensities, but there are some things we need to look at in terms of the national annex. So we're actually looking at a class C bridge here, which is urban. And that gives us a group of pedestrians moving across the bridge of eight. The frequency that we're targeting is three hertz. Now the K factor here is basically worked out and it comes out for walking pedestrians as 0.22 and the reduction factor based on the logarithmic decrement of 0.22 for welded bridges, this is the damping, comes out as 0.23. So it's these numbers I need to use in the wizard. So if I go back to Lucas, so here we are, class C. We've got eight people. The frequency that we're going to look at is three hertz. The K factor here is 0.22, and the gamma factor here is 0.23. The search area, so I'm going to choose the search area I put onto the model called deck, and I'm going to just switch that option off there. Now, normally when you run this, you would run it at very small time increments, so we recommend something like 0.01 of a second. Now, that would take longer than we've got in this presentation today. So I'm going to run a, a, a very coarse time step. This is too coarse to give me good results, but it will show you what it does, like, basically. So if I run this, it will take a few seconds just to put the, um, the analysis together. But when it's done that, I'll show you the loads that it's created. So this is what it's done. It, it's added another analysis to my model, moving load analysis. And if I set it active, you should be able to see there is the sort of load on my model, effectively. Now, if I go to the next one, set that active, can you see the sign has changed? Now, this is basically running a pulsating load across my structure, but I'm not going to solve this because it's far too coarse to give me a graph such as that. Now, in this particular model, when we ran it, I was running it at 0 0.005 of a second, so a 200th of a second, effectively, where you would then do a graph. Now, in the next model I'm going to show you, I'll show you how I create these graphs. So if I go back to the model, I'm going to actually load in a different type of model now. So I'm going to cancel that, just file open, and I'm going to load this model looking at the crowd conditions. While that's loading, I'm going to go back to the PDF, and I'm going to talk about the, the crowd loading. Now, the crowd loading is essentially a load that you're going to vibrate up and down, 
with a sinusoidal effect, basically. Now, in terms of the model itself, you present the loading or you put the loading in the most adverse place for your particular structure. So can you see here I've got load going downwards, here I've got load going upwards. Now we've done that because if I look at my mode shape for the vertical one, it's that mode. So I'm trying to excite this mode in terms of the frequency response that we've got. So if I go back here, that's why I've applied the loading like that. Now if I look at the load curve that I'm using here, I've got an amp frequency of 3 hertz, so this load is going to vibrate sinusoidally at 3 hertz, and the amplitude here is 2.542. Now, the reason that amplitude is 2.5 is if you evaluate this equation, you get a value of 2.54 newtons per meter squared to be applied to your structure. Now, this may seem quite a small load, but actually what we're looking at is the dynamic component of the pedestrian load. Now, when you apply this to the model, what you will get is some results here that you could then pick a node and graph on, and that's what I'm going to do. So what I'm going to do is select a node, say here, and I'm then going to set active one particular load case. I'm just going to select the node again. So I've got node 67 down here, and I'm going to do a graph of how this node is being accelerated due to the crowd loading. So I'm going to go to Utilities, Graph Wizard. I'm going to look at a time history graph. Now in the X direction, I'm going to look at a named component, and I'm going to specify which load cases I want to look at. So I'm going to go to the crowd loading case, and I'm going to look at all of these load cases. Next, the component I'm going to look at is response time, and in the Y direction, I'm going to look at nodal, and I'm actually going to look at the entity of acceleration and the component AZ. Now, I'm not bothering titling this up just to speed for this demo, but if I now hit finish, what you'll see is a steady state response from this structure. So this is an acceleration value of 0.5 meters per second squared, which if you look at the UK National Annex is right on the limit of what's acceptable for dynamics on a bridge structure. Now, to set this model up, there are a few things that I've skipped over in the presentation today, but we are going to load up complete videos of how you set these models up next week and they will cover all aspects of setting these models up, including things like damping, what damping value should I set, and how you set that. So they will be up on the website later this week or later next week. So at this point, I'm going to hand it back to Phil. Okay, thank you again, Julian. Um, questions that we had in that session were largely around damping, so just to re reiterate what Julian has said there. Uh, not only will there be a recording of this session, but we are going to put up additional videos um, to look at phenomena that we just haven't had the chance to look at in this presentation. That wraps up the technical side of the presentation. For more information on footbridge dynamics and any other analysis techniques that LUSAS can be applied to, please do make contact with us. You can contact us uh, by phone, of course, on the email address here, info at lusas.com. And for those of you that have contact with account managers, please also make contact directly with them. Lusas video content. We have a YouTube channel. Please do uh, sign up to that, subscribe to it. If you do, as these videos are loaded up onto it, you will be notified. Um, not just for the webinar, but for any future videos. The webinars themselves, this series will continue. Uh, we've put together a survey, and on the basis of the feedback, we're looking next at the Soil Structure Interaction Seminar. Um, customization Seminar will follow that. We also have a major software release uh, in the next months, and that will be um, preceded um, shortly by a, a, a webinar on that uh, particular release. To point you to some of our services as well, for those of you that are users, please consider our training courses. We have scheduled courses which run
um, regionally, so all around the world we have clients globally. They're very well received and you can see commendations here from our, our user base. Technical support is there for every user of LUSAS who's on a LUSAS lease, has full access to the hotline and the LUSAS user area. And our support team gets extremely high commendations um, for, the, uh, for the service that they provide. The support team also look after the LUSAS user area. Julian today has been showing a script, and on the user area there are various scripts and automated tools that you as users can download. The area is shown on the screen here, and any user can be given a password. If you do not have one at the moment, please apply for one. To extend our services and our partnership with the LUSAS community, we also offer consultancy services. This can be of the nature of doing entire projects, naturally, but it can also be um, more partial than that in the sense of seconding staff into your organization. So for companies that are having resourcing issues, are needing to hit particular deadlines and need some assistance, please do make contact with us and uh, we look forward to assisting you. Please also remember um, to send any remaining questions through to webinars at lusas.com and we will answer those. The video of the webinar, as we've said several times, will be posted to the website. It will also go up to YouTube. Everybody that has registered for this event, and this has been the biggest event by far that we've done uh, to date by number of registrants, all of you will be notified of video content being loaded up. So that really just uh, leaves me to thank you very much for your time um, from all of us. That's myself and my colleague, Julian. Thank you. And uh, we look forward to working with you in the future and to seeing you online again for future LUSAS events. Thank you and goodbye.